to the latest developments in the war in Israel and we'll look at the hostile questions journalists in the Canberra Press Gallery gave to the Israeli ambassador. Well, overnight, French President Emmanuel Macron emerged a hero. He visited Israel, stood shoulder to shoulder with the Jewish people and said that France was ready to fight Hamas, just like the coalition forces joined together to destroy ISIS in Iraq and Syria. Macron said the fight against terror isn't just one for the Jewish people, but one for all of humanity. This is why France is prepared for the international coalition against Islamic State, within which we are engaged for our operation in Iraq and Syria, to also be able to fight against Hamas. Macron is right. As he said, Hamas doesn't just pose a threat to Israel, but its terror threatens all of us in the West. Macron showed clear strength of leadership. Hamas, as he says, is like ISIS, or even worse. One journalist who witnessed the raw footage of the Hamas attacks described it as ISIS on steroids. But Prime Minister Anthony Albanese was then asked about Macron's commitment to Israel. Albanese was asked whether Australia would join in France's call for a coalition of forces to fight Hamas. In a staggering response, Albanese seemed more concerned about humanitarian aid getting through to Gaza than fighting terrorists. We agree with the United States uh, that it's important that we avoid spillover uh, on this issue, which would be uh, bad for Israel, bad for the region. I continue to emphasise that Australia's position is for the protection of innocent lives. Uh, we, we mourn as a nation, every innocent life uh, which has been lost in this conflict, uh, whether it be Israeli or Palestinian. And he was specifically asked about Emmanuel Macron's comments about whether he would join in the forces to fight Hamas, and he said he wanted to get humanitarian aid into Gaza. First, that was the priority. He resisted the call. Australia proudly joined the fight against ISIS in Syria and Iraq. We proudly helped defeat the terror group that beheaded journalists and Westerners. So what's different now? Hamas has butchered, beheaded, slaughtered and carried out depraved acts against babies, children, men, women and the elderly. So why wouldn't Australia answer France's call and join this fight? The only difference, as far as I can see, is that the Hamas victims are Israelis. And Albanese has, over his entire parliamentary career, spoken out against Israel and in support of Palestinians. And if you need a reminder, here's a quick clip of Albanese when he was younger, holding the megaphone at a pro-Palestinian rally. <laughs> We're now seeing Albanese show his true colours. He could only stay on message for so long. And apparently, two weeks after the worst terror attacks for the Jewish community since the Holocaust, well, two weeks appears to have been his limit. Albanese wants to focus not on France's call to destroy the Hamas terror group, but on bringing Australians living in Gaza home. Now... When Australia brought families from Syria and Iraq to Australia, there were rigorous security checks to ensure we weren't bringing terrorism into our country. Even women and children who were related to ISIS fighters remained stranded in camps for years while security assessments were made and made again and again. So has Albanese committed to bringing the 79 people who've been living in Gaza into Australia before our intelligence and security agencies have conducted checks to ensure that they have no Hamas affiliations? If Gaza is so oppressed and supposedly one of the worst places on earth, you have to ask why would these 79 Australians or dual citizens have chosen to live there instead of our beautiful, peaceful country. 
we simply don't have the answers to these questions and it's unclear if the Prime Minister has even thought of the security risk. You wonder how ASIO boss Mike Burgess might feel about it. The Jewish community is already feeling unsafe and we need to know that Hamas terrorists aren't going to be given the red carpet and flown right into the heart of our capital cities. Already, on top of calls to gas the Jews at major protests at the Opera House, we're seeing pro-Palestinian songs played on public trains. And even the train driver gave a message of support to his community. Then there was a Palestinian flag that has been flown at a Sydney council. Now, let's be very clear about this. They are flying the flag where Hamas is the governing body in the wake of horrendous and unprovoked attacks against the Jewish community. These were brutal, treacherous attacks. Have a listen to the motion that was passed at that council meeting today. In this tragic day, when we mourn the lives of those killed by Israeli aggression in Gaza and Palestine, I kindly ask everyone to observe a minute of silence in memory of the victim of this aggression. Thank you, Ms. May. If you can stand. So that council that passed a motion to fly the Palestinian flag, they're angry at the Israeli strikes against Hamas, but not, they're not angry about the unprovoked attacks. The pro-Palestinian protests we've seen in the wake of the terror attacks have been global, they've been aggressive and they've been scary. And here was Nigel Farage on Paul Murray's show last night talking about how this hatred against the Jews has been able to spread throughout the Western world. The words that were uttered at the Opera House were perhaps the vilest that we've heard anywhere around the world. But I think what happened in London on Saturday with 100,000 people on the streets uh, was different in the sense that, yes, of course, uh, they were shouting jihad, they were shouting curse to the Jews. And I'm being allowed to do this, which is totally astonishing. Uh, but it was the intimidatory atmosphere. It was the, the real difficulty that the police had uh, in dealing with a lot of very aggressive young men. Uh, I tell you what, uh, to anybody that told us 20 years ago that all diversity was good. The more people we allowed in from different cultures, the richer and better our country would be. Well, have a look at what happened last Saturday. Now, the Israeli ambassador, Amir Maimon, spoke today at the Canberra Press Gallery. As you know, we interviewed him last night on this program. But today... In front of the nation's journalists, he made this very powerful remark. To defend Hamas is to defend ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Anyone who follows this course of action will eventually bring these murderers into their house. Every one of us will have to decide where we stand on this moral crossroads. It is such a powerful line and an important point. Every one of us will have to decide where we stand on this moral crossroad. But the journalists in the room in the Canberra bubble either weren't listening or they didn't care because here were some of their hostile questions to the Israeli ambassador. Penny Wong joined some other international allies in calling for a humanitarian pause on hostilities in Gaza. Um, is this a call that you um, agree with or one that Israel will be heeding? And what do you make of um, Australia's entry into that debate? How are those statements consistent with international humanitarian law? Don't these comments contradict your statement and instead demonstrate the Israeli government's blatant disregard for Palestinian civilians? What number of Palestinian people killed is a satisfactory number for the Palestinian uh, for the Israeli government? Penny Wong has also said today that the way Israel exercises its right to defend itself matters. Um, you said in your speech uh, it is uh, Israel's intention to defeat Hamas. You call them a murder machine. 
Aren't you then also talking about defeating the Palestinian people, killing Palestinian people? Because how do you draw that distinction uh, when you were saying that uh, Hamas are using them as, as uh, shields? Trapped Australians who are trapped in I Gaza. But I'm wondering if you fear that in another 20 years we'll be looking back on this moment and comparing not just the attacks but the consequences of the responses to them. I mean, that one female ABC journalist in the middle there, well, she may as well have been wearing a free Gaza T-shirt. This is appalling. And these questions betray how the journalists who report the news think. And it explains why you guess such biased coverage from their media outlets, from the ABC, these journalists were from the ABC, The Guardian, SBS, The Sydney Morning Herald. I mean, this is what the Australian people are reading about Israel. And it's why I'm personally so grateful to work for News Corp and Sky News. The ambassador, Amir Maimon, was poised, he was calm, and he responded to each inflammatory question thoughtfully. He made this excellent point. I don't recall when uh, the Twin Tower were attacked that uh, the United States was uh, questioned about uh, their military objectives, nor about the humanitarian situation in Afghanistan. It's true. And he made the point also that you can't trust the current Palestinian death toll, that the information is from Hamas, the claims that 5,000 people have been killed, and that it's greatly exaggerated. Have a listen. Let's not forget that the information about the Palestinian casualties arrives from the uh, Palestinian Ministry of Health, which is controlled by the Hamas. Let me just refresh your memory. Uh, after the incident uh, in the hospital, they immediately announced that about 500 Palestinians were killed uh, as a result of the uh, malfunctioning of uh, uh, the Hamas uh, missile, the Islamic uh, Jihad missile, which was fired from uh, the, uh, uh, behind the cemetery. It's important to understand that uh, our findings are a bit different and we understand that uh, only about 50 people were killed there. Amir Maimon also asked the journalists in the room how they thought Australia would respond if our people were taken hostage. And I don't know what Australia will be doing if uh, Australia will be attacked by a barrage of missiles and uh, Australia will not respond because uh, in the building from which these barrage uh, of missiles were fired, there are also some civilians. And it's also very important to remember that since October the 7th, the Hamas fired over 7,500 missiles. And they fire all these missiles in order to kill people, innocent civilians. Just, you know, we were lucky to have uh, our uh, missile defense uh, Iron Dome system, which intercept uh, the majority of the attacking uh, uh, missiles. But can you ask yourself what would have happened if we didn't have this missile defense? So we are blamed for better defending our people? The ambassador made the point that while there's international pressure on Israel and a lot of it, we're still really waiting to see international pressure on Hamas to release the innocent hostages. He also said over and over again there was no intention to harm innocent Palestinians and that once Hamas is uprooted, he hoped Israelis and Palestinians could live side by side in peace and security. Meanwhile, Israel has called for the resignation of the UN chief Antonio Guterres after he said the attacks by Hamas did not happen in a vacuum. Israeli's ambassador to the UN, Gilad Erdan, said that this is, an ex is expressing an understanding for terrorism and murder, and he said it's unfathomable. He said on a tweet, it's truly sad that the head of an organisation that arose after the Holocaust holds such horrible views, a tragedy.